One of the things that has always really annoyed me, unnecessarily perhaps, is that thing that boomers and older Generation X folk always say when someone brings up the Daleks. This is what they say. Oh, the Daleks. They were scary. I used to hide behind the sofa when they were on. Did you, though? Really? I mean, they're snot in pepper grinder tanks talking through a fan, so they're not that scary. But crucially, how many of you actually had sofas that weren't pressed against the wall? Unless you're quite well off, or at best, sort of middle class, there's no way you've got enough room in your front room to just place your settee in the middle of that room. Be better than this mythos, this lie. You were not hiding behind your sofa when you saw the Daleks. I know it's not true. You know it's not true. So stop bringing it up. Doctor Who is one of those shows that should not need an introduction. Starting in 1963, yeah, 63, do you see? I do put some planning in the episode numbers. Not not much, though. Uh, Doctor Who is a British time travel sci-fi programme of international renown. It follows the titular Doctor, an extraterrestrial with a human appearance who explores the universe in a police box shaped spaceship, helping out civilizations that are in a bit of a bind. The Doctor usually finds a companion, usually one of human origin, to keep them from feeling lonely in their many, many and long adventures around the universe and also to act as a bit of an exposition dump to the Doctor's many schemes and explanations of the many otherworldly happenings of the show. When an actor leaves the role the series has a neat conceit where the Doctor's alien physiology basically regenerates into an entirely new actor with a different personality uh, which range from an old man to weird dorks, to guys with spectacular hair, and even ladies. That last one went down real well with absolutely every fan, I can assure you. Yes. In the game, you'll be playing as the seventh iteration of the Doctor, played by Sylvester McCoy. McCoy was the last actor to play the Doctor before the show originally ended in the late 1980s. Then there was a failed attempt at an American stroke British TV movie relaunch in the mid 90s and a much, much, much more successful relaunch of the TV show in the mid 2000s that is still running today. And boy, did it bring with it a lot of merchandise when it came back. Doctor Who's popularity is perhaps starting to dwindle a bit these days, uh, but it would be a major surprise to see it disappear for good from this point on. Before I get to the official Spectrum Doctor Who game, it is perhaps courtesy to check out its non-official tribute, that being CRL's Doctor What. Doctor What was released in 1987 and is an adventure game. Doctors What, Why, When and Where are all based on past iterations of the BBC Time Lord and they've got themselves in a spot of bother. They've had a big old drunken party and now they find themselves hung over in a variety of troublesome environments in their tridices, do you see? Uh, What follows is a dated, for 1987, looking spellbound alike, with confusing controls and the widest range of scoring in magazine reviews I have ever seen. Crash gave it a 17%, Sinclair user a 2 out of 5, your Sinclair a 6 out of 10, but CMVG gave it their CMVG hit award. So is it any good or not? Nope, not really.
Moving on to the proper Doctor Who now, Dalek Attack by our forever channel buddies at Alternative Software. And, um, oh dear, the Spectrum is already playing catch up with other formats. The Spectrum, you see, missed out on a previous Doctor Who game called The Minds of Terror, due to it needing an add-on cartridge, the cost of which financially crippled developers micro-power, as they'd already have to make a ROM chip for the actually released BBC Micro version. Versions did also appear on the Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC, but really, don't worry Spectrum owners, you weren't missing out by not being able to play this Colin Baker's sixth Doctor fronted effort. It wasn't brilliant. Doctor Who had previous form for flirting with your 48k as well. As well as Minds of Terror being advertised but never released, another game was planned but never materialised. You know, like a TARDIS, yeah? Um, That game would of course be the text adventure Doctor Who and the Warlord, which appeared in the end exclusively on the BBC Micro. Because, oh, BBC Micro, I suppose you're favoured, because, you know, BBC Doctor Who, that's a bit much, isn't it? Oh, I suppose it's fair enough. But when Doctor Who finally did show his face on the spectrum in Dalek Attack in 1993, he only bought one of those aforementioned faces, or fizzogs, as I like to say. That being the face of Sylvester McCoy's Seventh Doctor. This was less than the other formats as you could choose between the 4th, 5th and 7th Doctor in the Atari ST and Commodore 64 ports and the 2nd, 4th and 7th Doctor in the Amiga and MS-DOS versions. Poor old Colin Baker. Not only that, but the Spectrum version had less enemies, no hoverboard opener and only Ace to pick from as the second player character for player two when a unit soldier was selectable in the other versions. And not only that, it was a year later than the other versions. Why was this? Well, Alternative had no plans to release it at all. In fact, and get this, Dalek Attack was the very last TV license to appear on the Spectrum, which is quite sad in the context of this uh, YouTube series that I'm doing. However, it won't be the last video, there's about another 40 to do. Dalek Attack was only released on the Spectrum after a concerted effort from fans of the series and the system asking for the game to come out that was championed by a Your Sinclair campaign. That is indeed people power. So, was it worth all the near misses, all the delays, all the games that never quite came out, and then all the pleading to get the gallant Gallifreyan on the ZX Spectrum? Um, ish. First and foremost, if your ideal Doctor Who game features an extremely agile Doctor running around at breakneck pace, shooting enemies with his sonic screwdriver and leaping off rooftops like a parkour lunatic, then, well, have you ever seen a Doctor Who episode? Doctor Who, in all his incarnations, is a smart, cool thinker who outwits his extraterrestrial opponents. A methodical chess player, if you will, not afraid to dive under a closing door or build up a sweat, but he's no Captain America. But in Dalek Attack, he's way more Chris Evans than he is Sylvester McCoy. There is very little to relate the game to the TV show here. Sure, Sophie Aldred's character Ace, she loved uh, an explosion or two, but the Doctor? Nah. The plotline, as it is, is that the Daleks have invaded four cities, Tokyo, London, Paris and New York, and the Doctor has sneaked into these fortified, force-field domed cities by infiltrating them. Get this, by going underneath the dome, in the sewers and the underground train tunnels. Silly old pepper pots. Could you not have done a force field ball instead of a dome that covered every entrance? Ah, dear. Once Earth has been liberated, it's off to see 
Old Davros on planet Scaro, the world of the Daleks. To, you know, have a bloody good chat about what he's been up to and why he shouldn't have done those terrible things. Other enemies have joined the Daleks in their planetary assault, including Robomen and the Ogrons, which adds a bit of variety to the enemy types, as does the requirement to free captured people. While overall the game isn't very Doctor Who-like, it is an impressively quick game, and it is fun to play, initially anyway. In terms of its problems, well, the map can be a bit confusing to manoeuvre around and the enemies are definitely thirsty for the blood that pumps through your twin hearts. And if you take them out, well, they'll regenerate much like the Doctor in a few minutes' time and be after you all over again. The monochrome plainness of the admittedly well-drawn graphics can make it quite hard to discern what is a grabbable interactive object and what is not. Um, you can shimmy yourself up drain pipes and clamber across London Underground signs, but there's some things you can't interact with. You can climb into this fireplace. You can go through this door, but you can't go through that door. It's uh, exhilaratingly quick, which is a real testament to the programming team that put this out in relatively short order um, when they had the Whovian nerdlings pester them to release a game on a format that had unfortunately reached the end of its life cycle. But ultimately, Dalek Attack just leaves me thinking, who thought that this action game was a good use of the license? Your Sinclair, possibly the only magazine still reviewing games for the Spectrum in July 1993, said it was a chore to enjoy yourself. And while reviewer Chris had great fun running about the place, the gameplay eventually got in the way. He then gave it a 56%. I would say, ultimately, it's worth throwing the tape behind the settee then, if you're not too worried about all the fake people hiding from Daleks behind there. So, not a very interesting game to play, but maybe quite an interesting story behind it. The next episode of Spectrum Games Based on TV Shows, episode 64 no less, finds us in the company of the prehistoric man who could never succeed in putting his cat out for the night. Yabba Dabba Doo! The Flintstones. Wilma! Like, subscribe. And Kate thanks, bye.